News out today that Ethereum could be on the receiving end of a Ponzi scam. And let's have a look how that could affect the price over the coming weeks and months. Hello, welcome to my channel. Please make sure you do like this video, subscribe to my channel, and let's have a delve into this news that was released yesterday about a potential new Ponzi scheme that could cause some havoc on the market. So, a trade of fears that 200 million in Ethereum collected by new Ponzi could cause disaster. And it does start off by talking about in 2019, there was another Ponzi scheme. You will have heard of it. It was the Plus Token um, scam. And it did manage to garner over $200 million worth of deposits over a, a course of half a year and then disappeared. And then it has been in the news recently about the, the Plus Token scam that the, the Chinese authorities are dealing with it. So who knows where that money is, that $2, million, uh, $2 billion, which could potentially again still be dropped on the market. We do not know. But I'd just say, unfortunately, here we have another large crypto scam on the scheme. And it, and it does run into this. And it's talking about a. a a scam called Forsage, and it does say that if you've been on Ether Gas Station or Ether Scan, so Ether Scan is the block explorer for Ethereum, over the past few months you'll like to see the, the name Forsage or Smartway Forsage pop up from time to time. Uh, and this is due to the sheer number of transactions um, the smart contract was seeing. Over the last probably two or three months, we've had a massive rise in DeFi coins. And that has led to Ethereum gas prices being absolutely insane. I think I tried to sell um, an ERC20 token, I can't remember which one it was. It was only around three, dollars $400, and the gas prices was around $80. And considering it's usually about $0.50, cent, that was absolutely ridiculous. And it has dropped down since. I think we have dropped down to back down to them levels where I was paying around $1.00. But them levels was absolutely ridiculous. And it does say that although most in the industry ignored the, the Forsage name, it was recently revealed by Dovey Wan, a founder partner of Primitive Capital and com um, Crypto Commentary, that is it actually a Ponzi scheme. And that's what we do not want to hear. Something like that, somebody holding $200 million, uh, $200 million a year um, with the possibility of them dumping that could make some crazy scenes on the market. One does say that it's just your typical crypto pyramid scheme. It's nothing fancy, but it, it has managed to garner in $200 million. It is based in the Philippines, um, and Forsage has made such an impact that the SEC in the Philippines has issued a warning regarding it and other cryptocurrency scams that are operating in the region. It, one also does say that while most of the Western world are still unaware of Forsage, um, others fear that the collapse of a Ponzi could drive the crypto market. And she doesn't mean down, um, up, she means down. But if, if $200 million gets dumped on the market, all in a one of that's going to have such a big impact. Um, it will drive a lot of the other altcoins down with it. And potentially, if they dump it into, uh, if they dump it into Bitcoin, then again, that will bring everything down with it. But as, it, as you can see on this graph, we've been up to $480, and we are already down 30%. So, I mean, we could be offloading it slowly, but we just don't know. But we will have a look at the charts now to see... Um, what could potentially happen uh, with regards to price action, um, and I'll give my spin on what I think could potentially happen due to this crazy world pandemic, and I do think that we're going to start to get some lower prices on things if Bitcoin manages to drop below $10,000. It's, it's holding up pretty well at the minute. So here we have Ethereum versus Tether. This is on the, the daily chart, I'm using Coinbase chart. We do have quite a lot of data on this. I already have pre-marked the all-time highs up, which was at around $1,420. And the last point I marked up was this. I think this was the area I was aiming for in the last few months. We, were, I was trying to aim to around um, $516, but we never made it. We did jump up to around $490, and we've, we've been on a bit of a retracement ever since. But if you just look back in time a little bit to March 13th, we did drop Bitcoin at that that crazy drop uh, around 50 odd percent and then ever since then we've done a great run and if we just put that into a price from that bottom wick down there if you load it up if you manage to get some ethereum at 89 dollars then praise to you and it we did shoot up all the way up to around 300 and what did we jump up to sorry 399 dollars so that's um sorry 
$489. We did jump up around 445%. So that's that's been a good move. And as you can see, we have started to, you could say it roll over. We got a double top on the daily time frame. And we are starting to turn over a bit. If we just put the, the Hitman indicator on, this gives you a, an idea with market momentum. And, and so far, ever since the 4th of April, 5th of April, we was bullish. And we was bullish for a long time. We was, how many days? Right, if we just put that as a, a date range from that date there, all the way up to the current time, we was bullish for 148 days. So that's a long time. And now we did get a drop on the, what date was that? The 2nd of September. And ever since then, that gives us a, a, a bare indicator on the daily time frame. And I do believe due to that i think that we're going to start to drop down i do think we're going to drop we have we have du double top there we are having a little bit of relief rally now but i d honestly think it's superficial i think it's i don't think we're going to spin around um and come back bullish i just can't see it in my opinion i think i think the money's run out now america the u.s federal reserve have printed off so many trillions of dollars and managed to boost the stock market so tether printers printed off something like six billion dollars and and pump the pump the crypto market up so i just think that i do think it's time for us to spin round and what i'm going to do is just drop into the weekly time frame and get a couple of key levels on with regards to um support and resistance and see if we can spot anything that jumps out a mile um, and we'll give us some good areas to target i'm not going to go too far into the the future so as you can see we've got a, a good level there if we just mark it up there so top of that wick sorry top of that wick there we we came all the way through and we acted as resistance there, come all the way through and we we pretty much jumped off that level there and that acted as support and that's what we bounced off recently. We we let's just change that to the weekly time frame. There we go. So that acted as support there and resistance there. So I mean this could be the next area to break if we do start to break down. Let's just have a look see if we can see any more key levels anywhere. Hmm. I mean, you could say we got a level there that runs all the way through from the bottom of that wick. We acted as support there, come all the way through, acted as a resistance, acted as support, and then we have bounced off that area quite a few times, and we've got a bit of action in around there. Let's just see if we've got anything a little bit lower. Probably one there as well. Off bottom of that wick, we acted as support again, and then support, support, and then it's been doing pretty well ever since then. We um we, we did get a, quite a good rise from that wick in, in March when we bounced back down. Let's just change that to a weekly again. So we've got a little bit of structure in place there. Because I think we're going to go lower. I'm not going to put any higher up yet. We, if we're going higher, that is my next target. But let's drop into the daily time frame. So we have a little bit of market structure in place there. I'm not going to put any daily support levels in because we have enough structure there. And what I'll do is bang the Fibonacci on. From the bottom of that move, all up to the top, and we got a double top. And have a look at some key areas where we could potentially get in. Now, look at this level here, the 786. That is bang on a Fibonacci level and bang on the weekly support level. So I do think that the 618 level is always a good retracement area, and it's a good area to buy in. But I do think that we're going to come lower. Um, if this Ponzi scheme does manage to offload 200 million, and if we do it in a one we're going to get some massive, massive dumps. So, this is my area to buy. I think that we can hit this level down here. Um, if Bitcoin manages to spin, if you just look at the top here, we're currently trading at $10,259. We have bound, been bouncing off around $10,000. We did drop down to $9,800, but it just bounced back up. That 10k level has been tough as a nut and it is finding hard to crack. Um, but I do think. I do think that things are going to start to switch. If we just bang the um, the EMAs on, as you can see, we've had an EMA across here. We've had a slight jump up, but it's nothing to be concerned about that. I do think that we're going to spin. This is just a little relief here. We, we, we're already starting to come back down. We did jump up to 375, and now we're trading at 362. So we are starting to spin around. I do think that we can target these levels. If we do manage to break through this level, um and go lower than obviously tagging 108 doubles and this weekly weekly level down here when we jumped off at um around 89 dollars you could potentially see that depend it just depends how a market um what goes on but i do think in my opinion we can hit this level i'm not going to give any um forecast with regards to price prediction because 
We need to flip this area. We need a big, large, bullish engulfing candle. We need to smash through 515. If we smash through 515 over the next coming weeks or month, I will be bullish. But currently, I'm bearish. I do think that this will be a great area to get in. Um, if we just put that in um, a Satoshi value, because if you, a lot of people do trade in Satoshis, I don't personally, because I'm thick <laughs> and I prefer to trade in... I do prefer to trade in um, in dollars. If we just bang and Fibonacci on again from the lows of March, when did we have it? It was around there. We'll take that bottom body there, all up to the top. And we look at a 786 level around there. You're talking 24,000 sets. So if you're trading in. If you're trading in um, Satoshis, then that would be a good area for you to get in. But like I say, I do trade in dollars, and I think that that could be a good potential area. Have some orders in place, bang some orders down in them areas, and if we don't hit, then you've shit out on you. If the if the market does start coming down and your orders are getting very close, then pull them orders um, and just wait a little bit and see if it start to come through. And if it starts to push through that level, then obviously going to target the next levels down here. So that is my take. We need to be wary that these Ponzi schemes can dump all the money. Two hundred million dollars on this market will make a massive impact on the price of Ethereum. And also that we are in a pandemic. We are, in in my opinion, going to drop at some point. We have the economies around the world starting to collapse. There's a lot of countries in a recession. And I just think that this move has been artificially pumped. Um, the DeFi bubble has absolutely helped us so much. There's been so much money into DeFi. And I don't think we're going to switch. So that will wrap it up for today's video. That's just my take on what could potentially happen with Ethereum and, and what happens if they don't. So thanks so much for listening. Please make sure you do like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll catch you next time.